Hey everybody, it's me, Rob Marsiglio, sales representative with Kelly Williams Referred Urban Realty out here in Durham region, helping the great people of this area. Do my best to bring you weekly content right here on this channel, covering all things greater Toronto area real estate. Today, we're gonna try and hone in on what is important to you as somebody looking to transact in this market. I've been seeing headlines about national stats lately that claim there's gonna be a resurgence in 2024. I've seen things on social media talking about multiple offers, the market heating up. I'm going to try and sift through some of that for you, the consumer, to let you know maybe what you should be focusing on, what is actually happening in the marketplace. So first off, what should you be focusing on? And in my opinion, it's not national headlines like these ones. From Global, Canada's housing market hit an unexpected surge heading into 2024. Will it last? The Toronto Star says Canada's coiled up housing market to see rebound year with price gains into 2025. And even this one from CTV News, home prices could drop by 10% in early 2024, according to TD. Now I tried to pick headlines that were a little bullish and a little bearish because I really don't think it matters what the tone of the headline or the article is. The point that I wanna drive home to you as the consumer is you are making a decision to buy, sell, or rent in a hyper local market. You're choosing to move to Mississauga, to Whitby, to Newmarket, to Saskatoon, wherever it may be. Looking at a national headline and what the forecast is for trends on the aggregate for the whole country means absolutely nothing to you and the decisions that you are going to make as a purchaser in your hyper local community. Now, I'm by no means saying to tune out the national data altogether. I think it is educational and informative. I love following people like Daniel Foch. Uh, John Flynn on this platform who do a great job monthly breaking down the Korea stats and reports when they come out. But at the same time, beware of people trying to use these narratives, I'd say especially on the more bullish side, to tell you, you know, something is going to happen with your hyper local market based on what is happening at a national level. That's the national headlines piece. The next thing that I want to talk to you about is just being aware of anecdotes that are posted on social media. A couple colleagues of mine out here in Durham region, uh, Cam Cassidy, and Michelle Makos, also known as RE Woman on X, put out posts just highlighting some pretty crazy offer night scenarios that they were a part of over the last couple days. First, here's Cam. More proof the market is heating up. Whitby Bungalow that was listed last Thursday got 22 offers yesterday and sold for 135000 over the list price. Cam sold a house across the street in December that is much nicer for $45,000 less than what this sold for. Michelle Makos, market can't be dead as you think. 16 offers in Oshawa. She updated that stat a couple minutes later saying, actually, we're up to 25 offers now. Now, here's another trap that I don't want you to fall into, especially as a buyer in this market, is taking these posts and then applying them to the market as a whole. It's pretty surprising to see the number of offers that some properties are getting right now, especially considering just what we've been used to for the last, you know, year and a half as the market really slowed down. If you've watched the channel before, you know me, you know I love my data, putting my charts together. So I've put together a few to show you what is happening across the greater Toronto area in terms of the number of sales that we've seen in January so far, comparing that to past Januarys, comparing that to December, and also showing you the percentage of properties that have sold for over the asking price. Okay, we've got six charts here. We're gonna go through them pretty quickly and you can see it's reported sales versus the percentage sold over the asking. So the bars are the reported sales for January 2019 through 2024 and then I threw December 2023 in there as well to compare really month to month, are we heating up? So the Toronto freehold market, uh, you can see we had more sales in December than we had in January of last year. So far this January, we've got 209 sales reported so far, probably on track to eclipse what we saw in January of 2023. But you can see that the percentage of properties sold over asking right now is the lowest it's been for a January going back to 2019. And in December 2023, it's also lower than the number that we reported back then. Now we are in the early days and a lot can change in the month of January. I don't want to say that this 17.7% is going to hold the entire way through. But at the same time, in the first couple of weeks of the month, I'm not seeing signs of major heating up in the Toronto freehold market. Did the same exercise for Toronto condos. You can see here, more than likely going to eclipse the number of sales that we saw last January, but our percentage of properties sold 
over asking is at 9.22%, also the lowest that we've seen going back to 2019 and slower than we saw in December of 2023. Over the Durham freehold market, you can see almost 90% of properties were selling over asking at the relative peak in January of 2022. They were down to below 22%, also a little bit below what we saw in December of 2023. York freehold market, this one's actually picked up just a tiny bit in terms of the percentage of properties selling for over the asking price, still well below what we saw even last January, and then obviously what, below what we saw at the peak of the market. Peel here's the same story. We've seen the percentage of properties selling over the asking price fall off from month to month, although we have seen quite a few more properties reported sold in January of 2024, at least we're on track to surpass January 2023 quite easily. Then to wrap things up, we'll look at the Halton freehold market. All these charts look pretty similar. You know, we're seeing slightly more properties sell for over the asking price in Halton in January of 2024 versus December of 2023, but again, lower than we saw last year at the same time. So nothing there is really jumping out to me as, you know, the market heating up to some crazy level. Like we're not talking anywhere close to what we saw 2021, 2022, even 2020. So while there is the chance that you may come across a property that receives, you know, 22, 25, 30 offers on it, I'm not seeing that being the case right across the board, right across the GTA. So we started this conversation from a national perspective, then we dove down to specific properties and the number of offers they're getting. Then we pulled out to each region of the GTA. And now to wrap things up, I wanna lump the entire GTA together just to show you where we're at kind of through the first 14 days of January compared to every year going back to 2008. Started off with a post that I put out on X that really just summarizes everything. So through 14 full days of January using the TREB market watch criteria, we have 3,271 new listings entered. That ranks 13th going back to 2008 for January. We have 1,477 sales reported, which ranks ninth, so right in the middle of the pack going back to 08. And then our removals, our terminations, suspensions, and expiries, just over 3,050, which ranks fourth going back to 2008. So what I'm kind of seeing here is that sellers are a little slower to come back to the market this year than in years past. So it is still early days in January, but that's what I'm seeing so far. Nothing's really jumping out at me as indicating the market is on fire, but I wanna hear from you and what you think. What are you seeing in your market? Have there been sale prices that you're shocked at? Stories of multiple offers? Let me know in the comments below what you're hearing and where you think we're going for the rest of this month, the rest of the spring market, even the rest of the year. Thank you so much for sticking with me right to the end of another video. Till we speak again next time, stay safe and cheers. Hey there, I really appreciate you watching this video all the way to the end. If you enjoyed it, I've got another video for you right here on the screen. And you know, while you're here, maybe just click on my face, subscribe to, I don't want you to miss anything going forward.